going to be talking about revenue generation, and we are very lucky to have Gary Brown, our Focal Point business coach, coming in today to tell us all about things that we should be looking at in our business to grow our revenue. Gary, on to you. Carla, thank you very much. It's, uh, as always, a great pleasure on my part to be a participant in the Small Business Solver webinar series. And I'm particularly interested in the uh, subject matter today, revenue generators. Uh, this happens to be a subject very near and dear to my heart, one also that I would think all of your listeners will also take to heart because we're talking about uh, the core element of our businesses. So again, uh, my name is Gary Brown. I'm a focal point business coach. Uh, I spent 20 years in corporate, then I had my own sales company selling industrial control equipment for a period of time, and then had the good fortune to uh, land within the focal point coaching world, and as a result of that, became connected with Small Business Solver. Uh, I've got my contact information up on the screen here if there's any interest in follow-on, whether there are questions at the end of this, or if uh, as a result of viewing the, uh, the audio presentation later, you, you want to make contact, certainly feel free. I'm happy to provide whatever help I can. So with that, I want to tell you that the primary purpose of a business, and this is just a lead into our revenue generation, but the primary purpose of our business is, number one, to create and keep a customer. And the second most important thing is to create and keep a customer. And then the third thing, just in case I need to say it again, it's to create and keep a customer. We are in business, folks, in order to create customers and then satisfy their requirements. And that is the primary purpose. With that cemented firmly in mind, here are a couple of things that you might give some thought to with regards to your business success. The first is, how do we measure success? Well, the best measure I would suggest is customer satisfaction. I have a little acronym shown on uh, the slide here. It's M-E-D-A, and that refers to customer satisfaction. Specifically, we meet customer expectations as the M. We can do better than M, however, because that's going to put us at great risk. Somebody's going to come along and scoop our customers. Well, we want to exceed customer expectations. And while exceeding expectations is okay, that still leaves us a, a little bit at risk that uh, the competition is going to come in. So what we really want to think about doing is either delighting, which is the D, better yet, how do we amaze our customers? How do we provide the service, the support required that causes our current customer base to reach out to the people that they know and refer our company, our products, our service to their friends and acquaintances? And that becomes the foundation, certainly, for great revenue generation. Now, the second point on this slide has to do with measurement method. What is the means by which we measure customer satisfaction? Well, it's not very difficult. And what I've got on the slide here is that we look for the repeat business that we get from our existing customers. We know for a fact that if they come back, they must have enjoyed the experience that they had in dealing with us. It was the product that they wanted, it met the requirements they had, and the service that we provided was exemplary. If they had a problem, we were able to deal with that in an effective, timely manner to their satisfaction. So we measure success through customer satisfaction, and we know we're getting it, uh, we're, we're achieving the, uh, the mission, if you will, by having repeat business. From that, I, uh, I leap on to the whole notion of, of revenue generation. And for me, that really talks about focusing on our sales. Uh, there was an interesting Dun & Bradstreet survey done uh, a number of years back. A very simple conclusion came out of that survey, and it was that businesses tend to fail when they have low sales. What a surprise. The other part of that was that businesses tend to succeed when they have high sales. 
wow, again, that probably shouldn't be too surprising. The thing that I really like about it is their final statement is that all else is commentary. And I know we can get hung up in our costs and reducing costs and things of this nature, but folks, what it really boils down to is you don't have business coming in the front door. You can forget about issues that you might have with how well you're dealing with inventory and accounts receivable and accounts payable. Our success, every business's success, is going to be predicated upon our ability to succeed in getting orders. So, something for you to think about. I've got a slide here that's called Revenue Formula. And something we use in the focal point world is a, uh, is a concept that we refer to as the way to wealth. And very simply put, this slide and the next actually are going to show you the four primary elements involved in g booking orders, getting revenue. Uh, the first thing on the slide is the number of leads we have. How are we prospecting for leads? What is our conversion rate in converting a lead to a customer like? What can we be doing differently? What is it in the sales process that will help us be more effective in that conversion process? And if we take the number of leads multiplied by our conversion rate, that yields, well, no surprise, it yields the number of customers we have. So if we can increase the, the number of leads by finding more prospects, be more effective in our, our rapport building, our presentation skills, our handling objections, et cetera, we'll be able to increase the number of customers. We'll now notice that our number of customers at the top of that slide times the average sales value times the number of sales that take place in a given period. And let's, let's for the moment assume we're talking about annual sales. So some number of, of customers times the average dollar value of a transaction times the number of transactions that take place in a year obviously yields total revenue. So if we were thinking, all right, what can I do to increase the number of leads, increase the percentage conversion rate that I'm having, which le leads to more customers, obviously. What do I do to increase the average sale price? Can I upsell? And I'm not necessarily talking about adding fries to that order, but perhaps uh, if I really dig deeply into the needs of a customer, I'll find that the item, the product, the service, whatever it might be that they initially came in looking for perhaps, in fact doesn't really speak to their true needs. Uh, perhaps there's something else that actually has a higher sales value that more uh, completely meets that requirement that they might have. And can I provide some, uh, some approach that's going to lead to more than one sale in, in a given period of time? How do I do that? Does it mean that uh, perhaps I add additional products to my offering, additional services? But you can see that regardless of what your current configuration might be in terms of your business and what it is you, you sell, be it product or service or both, that if you look at those four elements, of number of leads, conversion rate, the average dollar sale, and then the number of sales that occur in a given period of time, impacting any one of those four elements, ideally all four of them, will yield a much larger revenue for your company. So from a sales perspective, four elements to think about, four areas of endeavor where you can Sort of press your fingertips together, uh, lean back in your chair if that's how you get into your thinking posture, and think about how can I impact, how can we impact those four particular activities within the selling process. The productivity focus. This is something that, you know, we're, we're thinking about our, our revenue generation. And I think it's really helpful to think about the four elements shown on this particular slide. And here we're saying, you know, there are probably some things that I do today that I need to do more of. Well, what are those things? Likewise, there are probably some things that we do within our business. But you know what? I don't need to do that as often as I do it. Again, what are those things? The third point on the slide is there are probably some things that in fact, I could start doing something new, something that we're not currently doing could be added to the mix. 
Well, if that's the case, what would it be? And then fourth on this productivity uh, focus, you're probably doing some things right now, frankly, that you should stop doing. They don't provide any benefit. They don't provide uh, any additional revenue. In fact, chances are they subtract from revenue. So there's some things you probably should stop doing. Here are some, some general areas that I'm suggesting are very beneficial for the individual business owner to consider when thinking about generating revenue. We've talked about the way to wealth. Well, what are some of the variables that you might now, uh, maybe a better term, in fact, is lever. What are some of the levers that you might pull to help you in your revenue generation activities? I've listed four of them here. So I've got sales function, I've got the word differentiation, I've got the four P's of marketing, and I've said Pareto analysis. So we'll start off by talking about the sales function. I'm showing three particular elements. The first is owner focus. We're all owners of small businesses, and as such, we really should take the, uh, the attitude, the approach, that our number one objective as the owner is to drive sales through the front door. Uh, I mean, it's fine to be the one that runs out and buys the coffee and make sure the, uh, the air conditioner is working or the rent's being paid or whatever it might be, but we can't lose sight of the fact that our primary responsibility to ourselves, to our business, to our employees is to generate revenue, is to create customers. In other words, to create sales. So that has to be our primary focus. With that in mind, we need to be thinking about the key hires that we make. As our businesses succeed and we begin to grow, we're going to be adding people. Part of that uh, addition of people provides us with the opportunity to delegate certain activities to these other people. Well, we've got to make sure the people that we hire support the vision, the values of our organization, that they understand that their role, just like uh, yours as the business owner, is ultimately to create a customer and to provide customer satisfaction, to get that repeat business that I commented on earlier. So you want to make sure everybody's on board with the idea of growing the business and playing their respective part in growing the business. The third element I'm showing here is training. You know, and I think a lot of people think that, well, you know, I finished my high school, my college, my university, that's all behind me. But I'm showing a, a quote that I, I took from uh, actually John Kenneth Galbraith, uh, a well-known economist from uh, the mid-1900s. And he says that people are the common denominator for progress. No progress is possible with unimproved people. But well, we live in a world that's constantly changing. We live in a world where we're confronting competitors all the time. And businesses do not stay stagnant. They do not stand still. If we think that the people that we hired six months, two years, five years ago, and those people haven't had any training, if we're thinking that uh, they're as good as they ever were b before, they don't need any improvement, then the chances are something is about to uh, sneak up from behind and club you very, uh, well, very sneakily, I'll say, between the eyes as uh, these competitors look for ways to outfox, outsmart us, and certainly by having improved people, that provides them and, of course, by extension ourselves, with an opportunity to keep ahead of the game. So a lot of us, I fear, tend to say, well, training is a uh, an item that's discretionary. If I've got some money, I'll do a little bit, but I'd encourage everybody to to change that attitude, frankly, and realize that training is an essential ingredient in the success of your business, uh, and you really can't do too much in the area of training. Differentiation. Now you might have heard the term unique selling proposition. Well, this is, if you will, another way of saying differentiation. And differentiation is described uh, in three ways on this slide that I'm showing. Uh, one kind of brings a chuckle to mind when differentiation is described as, it's like having a gun in a knife fight. Now, it might not sound fair, but there's a good chance you're gonna win that fight. 
another statement is, what is not different is not strategic. You might ask yourself, if what I'm doing in my business and the, the what that I present to my customers isn't different, why are you doing it? What do you expect to get from that? How are customers going to be able to discern the difference that exists between your offering and the other guys down the street? Uh, so what is not different is not strategic. And then the final one, this uh, comes from uh, Kotler, Phil Kotler, who is a, a marketing professor. And it is that the company that stops getting better gets worse. So one of the things that I've certainly learned in my own experience of being a small business owner and even in my corporate background, there's no such thing as standing still. The status quo does not exist as far as I'm concerned. So if you're not getting better, if your attitude is not towards how do I differentiate my company, how do I stand out in the crowd. Uh, Seth Godin would have us uh, talk about how do I look like a purple cow standing in the field? How am I gonna be different? How am I gonna be recognized as different? And what's, what's out there that's gonna compel somebody to come to me instead of one of my uh, competitors? And of course, if you're getting that person to come to your store, your shop, your business, you're getting that business, you're growing your revenue, the competition is not. The next point on my list of variables that you can take a look at, the four P's of marketing. Now, it may or may not be a term you're familiar with. The, uh, the four P's are listed there as product, price, place, and promotion. And I just wanna back up though and say that the role of marketing is really to help each of us in our businesses build a long-term profitable relationship with our customers. You know, we're not interested in the person that comes in, shops once, buys once, and is gone. The most successful sale for all of us is the second sale, and of course the third and the fourth. But the second one says they came back. It was the repeat business that we commented on earlier as the measure of our customer satisfaction success. So that's the role of marketing. We've got the opportunity to take a look at the product that we're offering. Are there ways to change that product offering that will increase the transaction value, increase the number of transactions per period that were part of the way to wealth conversation? What is the price that I should be using? Uh, and I almost cringe at uh, the idea of raising the question of price because it seems to me so many people think that they'll differentiate solely on the basis of price when they don't have the lowest cost position and aren't in a position to differentiate on price. Uh, to me, it's a, a, a slippery slope and it only goes in one direction if you're gonna compete solely on price. But price is part of the marketing mix. How do I get it to the, uh, the customer, the potential customer is the, uh, the meaning behind place you know, where am I situated and how do I get that product out to them? Do I have direct sales? Is it internet-based marketing? Uh, the customer buys over the internet. Does the customer come to my place of business because they, it's a retail store? I mean, what is the means by which uh, I get the product into the hands of the customer? And then the fourth P is simply promotion. How am I reaching those people that I wanna reach, my target market, with the message that I've developed that I think is compelling, that I think supports my differentiation. So the four P's of marketing, all areas where we can, again, press our fingertips together and give some thought to what do I need to do, if anything, to, to change my offering? How do I tweak it? How do I constantly uh, forge forward to, to make my business better rather than uh, take that slippery slope direction and go in the direction of getting worse? How do I remain focused on being different so that in fact I am strategic? And then the next uh, variable, if you will, that I'd have you consider is the uh, the slide labeled Pareto analysis. Now, Pareto analysis may or may not be uh, an expression you're familiar with. Uh, you're likely more familiar with the common 80-20 description for Pareto. And 80-20 simply says that likely 80% of those things you're trying to achieve come from 20% of the activities. Uh, I've listed four things under uh, the heading 80-20 where the, the rule can be applied. 
The first one I've got is product. So you can use the 80-20 rule by looking at the products you currently offer. There's a good chance that only 20% of what you sell brings in 80% of the revenue. Well, that opens up an opportunity to say, well, are there some things that perhaps I could cull from my product offering? Should I get rid of some things? Because, in fact, they don't bring profit in. They, in fact, uh, provide me with a loss opportunity, and we're not that uh, terribly keen on that approach. The second approach that I've uh, indicated here is on our customers. Are there but 20% of our customers that bring in 80% of our revenue? Well, if that's the case, and undoubtedly it is, what do I do with the 80% that don't uh, create a lot of uh, possibility for me? Do I uh, say goodbye to some customers? And certainly I learned a long time ago that uh, just like the cola world, there are uncolas. Likewise, there can be uncustomers. So perhaps we need to take a look at, at reducing uh, some of our customers so that we can focus on those that really bring in the profit, hence increasing our total revenue. We can look at suppliers. You know, do I spend time dealing with uh, some percentage of my suppliers that uh, cause me a lot of grief? Would I be uh, better advised to spend some time, and maybe it's not me personally, but people in my company, dealing with only those suppliers we really want to partner with and free up people's time to be more creative, more productive in other areas? Finally, employees, uh, they fall into the same category. Do we have uh, employees that aren't pulling their weight, and who might they be? Uh, what should I be doing if, in fact, that's the case to make sure that everybody is aligned? So that's the Pareto analysis approach to this. I'd just like to end it with this final slide, and this is taking me back to a, a summary, really, of revenue generation possibilities. And I'm I'm showing here on this slide the uh, the approach to to really selling, and I, I think I'm trying to come full circle here with the idea that if we're going to be successful, we must be successful in the selling arena. So these seven items speak to the steps of the selling process. What are we doing to generate leads? How can we get more of them? Where do they come from? How do I find them? What are we doing to improve our conversion rate? We've found a prospect. How do I convert prospect to lead? How do I convert lead to customer? Can I get better at that? How can I increase the number of transactions? Well, what what in the marketing mix, what in those the various variables that we've already speaking about, spoken about rather, will help me increase the number of transactions that are available to me? How do I increase the transaction size? What can I do to impact the profit margin on each and every sale? What does it cost me to acquire a customer? You know, when I think about my promotion, my advertising, do I, in fact, look at the cost associated with my effort and measure how successful or not it is? Can I reduce the cost of customer acquisition? Well, in fact, the seventh step on this list, customer referrals, would suggest to you that if you can get referrals from existing customers, they are far, far less expensive to acquire than a brand new customer. And I think everybody would, would nod their heads on that one. So there's a list of seven uh, revenue generation items summarized. Uh, I think that there's a lot of opportunity for people to reflect on, on how to increase revenue. I would just remind you to go back and think about the way to wealth conversation. Take a look at those four primary elements within that algorithm, if you will, and uh, decide what it is you can do to impact each one of those four in a meaningful way. So number of customers, the, the, the number of leads, the average sales size, and the sales per period. With that, you'll increase your revenue, and with that, I'll finish my conversation. Thanks for listening. If there are any uh, questions, more than happy to take them at this point, and I wish you every success in your business.